I'm going to read for you an actual email that was sent to me by one of the subscribers today. Um, and it says, I've been in contact with other companies for quite some time now. So I decided to pursue government contracts. I established my company. However, I'm having a difficult time trying to justify my past performance under my company name because I was an employee for another company. This is a very commonly asked question for all of you out there that are just getting started in this marketplace, who've just heard about government contracts, maybe you formed your LLC recently or in the past, however you were an employee or you worked for a company as a 1099 or maybe you were an actual product consultant, you're wondering, Eric, what do I put down for past performance? How do I handle that? Well, so today in this video, we're gonna discuss what should you be putting down for past performance and or how do you get around past performance and what are some alternative options that are available for all of you out there who want to take part in this federal marketplace at the highest level possible to maximize your total revenues, your total opportunities out there. What should you be doing? Watch right now. All right, so the first thing is, if you are getting started out here in the marketplace, there is always the option to be a subcontractor. I cannot stress that enough. You know, when you are getting started and you don't know anyone, you don't have any resources, you don't have a reputation, being a subcontractor is a great way to go. It's a perfect avenue to get yourself inundated inside the government facility, working on a government base, on a government installation. Now you are there, you're on site, your people are on site, and the government gets a chance to really know who you are. Because again, if the government doesn't know who you are, how can they help you? One of the things that happened to me a long time ago when I was working as a subcontractor is that the actual person doing the inspections knows who are the ones doing the work. So even if some large company like say General Dynamics gives you the project, the guy who's doing the inspections, the government agent that is on the site who's doing the inspections, the site manager or the project manager, whoever that may be, they're going to recognize your firm for being the ones that are actually doing the performance. So if you do a good job, you're going to have a good name. And what's going to happen is they, yes, they obviously they like to use the big contractors and when they're handling these huge, enormous projects, but when they're smaller projects that they think is within your wheelhouse, within your specialty and your skill set, they're going to want to offer those jobs directly to you. So if they can get around working with some of the big guys and, and a lot of the scenarios, then they'll definitely, they'll take a chance and they'll do that right away. So I remember the first time that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, one of their reps, stepped up to me and said, hey, Eric, listen, I see you've got your firm. I checked out your website, which I didn't even know this guy knew who I was. But he had already done some research. He checked out my website. He said, look, it looks like you're up and coming. You need to talk to the person uh, over here at this particular location and talk to them about some particular contract opportunities directly for your firm instead of you working for these other guys. So again, being a subcontractor is a great way to get your foot in the door. The second way is, let's look at bidding RFQs. You know, you have RFQs, which are requests for quotes, and then RFPs, which are requests for proposals. Well, the RFQs, the majority of the time, they're not asking for past performance. So if you focus your attention on just the RFQs, then it's like a 90% probability that past performance is not going to be a factor. It's going to be based on your ability to be able to perform. It's going to be based on price, delivery, schedule time, other factors, but not actual past performance. Whereas if you're looking at requests for proposals, those require technical volumes, which whenever you're putting together anything that involves a write-up, more than likely it's going to be a best value scenario and you're going to have to look do your past performance and put that in there as well as your team members. So you're probably going to lose out when you're looking at RFPs versus RFQs. Let's take a look at some of that example right now on the screen. I've got pulled up here, site security and alarm system, uh, this project uh, over in Hawaii. And I just went on FedBizOps, pulled up the project. I pulled down the SF-18 form. Again, SF stands for Standard Form 18. This is the document you actually fill out to submit. They ask you to put on here your DUNS number. So on this form, they're asking you to put in your DUNS number and then put in your price. And that's it. And if we pull up the actual statement of work, nowhere on here on the statement of work is it asked for past performance. So I pull down all these documents. Again, there's a schedule. There's uh, tells you about the existing systems, tells you about some holidays, your wage rates, gives you maps and drawings and layouts of the building, but nowhere on there is asking for past performance. But again, we're talking about here, 
we're looking at, let's go up to the top, we're looking at here, it's an RFQ. Over here, um, another project on Fedbiz Ops. This one was a special notice. And I just, again, I'm just searching around, doing queries as we're discussing. And what they're asking for on the special notice is an actual product demonstration. And if you go through and you scroll down, it tells you the description of what they want done, doing some sort of experiment, uh, detection, track, identification of swimmers in a port harbor. And in the instructions, it tells you very clearly. It says, okay, list your company, your organization, description of your company, note if you're a small business or foreign owned, describe your demonstration, experimentation, objectives, and goals. Here's it says this capability description, product maturity, installation, integration, application. If you have any classification searches, um, secret classifications, how is it set up? But again, nowhere in there is it talking about actual past performance. So when we're looking at jobs and we're looking online, if you focus in on, for example, like Dibs and Fedbed, which and Nico um, and Fed Connect, things like that, you're going to see a lot of the RF. Q's out there. So those are just price proposals um, versus the RFPs. Now, I've seen some RFPs that don't require past performance. So you just have to look for it. And what I do is I do a quick search, you know, search and find. I type in past performance. And that's, you know, how I do it. Um, number four is actual bid local and state jobs. We just made a video recently about doing local and state projects. But to summarize, on the local and state levels, they are open floodgates for people that are just getting started off the ground. Now, that's not a way that I particularly like to recommend for people because a lot of times what happens is when people start doing state and local contracts, that becomes your new comfort zone. And when that becomes your comfort zone, it becomes very difficult to break out of that and then jump into the federal marketplace. That's why you don't see a lot of companies that are state and local companies that are doing federal contracts. And you don't see federal contractors doing state and local uh, contracts. So, a lot of times what will happen is that becomes your new normal and you become accustomed to just working at that very small level and you're not really preparing yourself for anything larger. You just kind of get into the everyday routine of doing those types of projects. So again, it is an option that's available to you if you want to get started in a, in a federal marketplace. Now, some out-of-the-box opportunities, some out-of-the-box solutions. First thing is teaming. Teaming is a very viable option. I've got a lot of videos that I've talked about, you know, how do you rocket ship to success? Team, you could team with a company that has past performance. Uh, we have people in our GovCon Giants group that have, they have the hustle, they're, they have the grit, they're going, they're really, they give out all the energy, they're gonna go out there and find the jobs, pull them down, knock them down, and close them, right? And then you've got companies that have, they've done some work in the past, they've done some work in the private sector, uh, they've done some government projects maybe years ago, uh, maybe when they had 8A, maybe when they had a certification, the government gave them projects. And now, you know, they're kind of they've lost their ambition. They lost that desire. And so they're not as they're not the ones that are going to go out there and, and rein in the deals. So you can be the guy that goes in the, or girl that goes in and wants to bring those deals in and partner with a company that's already out there and that already has some past performance on the books. You can use a team member. Do you have anybody on your team, a 1099 employee? Do you have a subcontractor that works for you that has past performance? I know that when we've put together deals, so for example, when we put together deals on some of our construction projects, you know, I, we didn't do electrical per se, but my electrical subcontractor, he did electrical work and he had a whole slew of past performance because why? He works with everybody on those the installation. So if you decide, right, if you're going off the project and you know you're working on a government facility, maybe it's wise to partner with some of the existing contractors out there. Because why? If you hire the brick mason guy that's already out there, he's got tons of past performance. If you decide to hire the AC guy out there, he's got a ton of past performance. But when you put it all together, you look like a solid outfit, right? Again, what they're judging is the overall proposal. So they're not judging just your company on its face. Yeah, they want to know that you have done some work. But at the same time, um, depending upon the size, scope, scale of the project, they want to know that you have a team of people, a team of uh, organization that can actually perform and execute on those contracts. Uh, number three, lie. Please do not lie. Do not try and fake it till you make it in this particular scenario. Be the, because what happens is this. Um, 
if you lie on your past performance, it's likely that if you don't have that experience, it's probably highly unlikely that you can execute and perform that task. And I would say this for, not because I think that you're going to get in trouble with the government because they're so big that you're probably not going to get in trouble. However, my concern would be that you are going to get in trouble in the sense that you're not going to be able to perform, you're not going to be able to execute. And so you're going to get yourself in more of a, a headache situation, more anxiety, trying to do a project that's above your ability, uh, that's outside of your uh, comfort zone, right? And then you're going to not perform, then you may hit, be hit with liquidated damages. So there's a lot of other factors that I that I you may want to consider before actually lying on the project. And then number four, my all-time favorite is become a consultant. I don't see what's wrong with becoming a consultant. What's wrong with finding a company, right? Like we said before, find a company that's super successful in the private sector that's not doing government contracts, right? Uh, agree or work out with them to help represent them to the government marketplace. So again, you're going to go to this company and you're going to talk to them about bringing them in more business. Who doesn't want more business? You're going to talk to them about bringing in opportunities. Now, you go out, and again, I know it takes some humility, right? So you've got to humble yourself and say, listen, I know that I don't have the past performance to actually start working in a government marketplace. But what if I decide I go and find a company, a mentor, someone out there who already has past performance, and I help them get contracts? At the end of the day, you're still on the government sites. You're still on the government installations. You're still doing the work, right? And for the majority of people out there, um, the monetary benefit or the monetary value of what you gain at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for, right? You know, we're not, I mean, yeah, you may want to build this national, global, international firm, right? Fortune 100 company. But for 99% of the people out there, I think that the bottom line is, right, making money, making additional money, building a career, uh, finding something long-term that can sustain you, your family, and the lifestyle that you want to create for yourself. So again, by being a consultant, right, and working for companies, that's going to get you in the game, get you in the door, makes it a whole hell of a lot easier to represent someone um, that has past performance, that has history, that can execute on the projects, right? If they need, you don't have to worry about the money part of it. So again, when you step up and you're sitting down with a government agent and you're talking and you're representing this large firm, right, that's behind you, it's very easy to say to the government um, unequivocally that, yes, we can perform this job. Yes, we will execute. Yes, we've got the financial resources. Yes, we've got the team members. So when you're putting together these technical proposals, these, these volumes right of documentation, you can list all of your team members' uh, experiences. You can put their resumes in there. And then if you say, hey, listen, John, I need someone who's got experience doing this, you just pull it, right? Just pull the information. He said, oh yeah, we've got three products where we did that. We've got 14 uh, different people who have that skill set, that have that certification. So it makes it a whole lot easier, right, when you're out there. Uh, right now, uh, we have for all of the GovCon Giants groups, if you're subscribed to my email list, you've probably seen it before. I'm actually going to be working with five people who have consultant clients, helping them take their business to the next level. We're going to be doing a 20-week program. I'm going to be working directly with five of you guys out there who you already want to go the consultant route. You have a potential consultant client or a member who's a large firm that can perform and execute. I want to take five of you guys out there right, and actually execute on some contracts. I want to help you get your client, win your client contracts in the federal arena. So if you're interested in that today, uh, go to my website, send an email in. Uh, if you're on my subscription list, you would have already seen that email. It's called GovCon Giant Certified Trainer Pilot Program. So if anyone out there is interested in that pilot program, send me an email, and we'll make sure to put you on the list for our upcoming webinar. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time.